Welcome to AWS What's New. I'm Jeff Barr. I've had three cups of coffee already today. I'm super, super wired and super excited to share with you uh, another story and some great launches. But before that, uh, I want to thank you for all the wonderful comments and feedback you get. I, I really love it. I really appreciate it. It helps me to want to do a better and better job every time. So keep it coming. All right, let me tell you a story. So I was, I was 19 years old. I was studying computer science at Montgomery Community College in Rockville, Maryland. I think I was just a quarter or two in. And I got my first professional programming job. I was going to get paid $7 an hour to write business applications in 6502 assembly language. It's a small company. The founder is this somewhat legendary person. We're told to always call him Dr. Jack Moshman President. We're always told to use the full name and the title. Turns out he's actually nationally famous. His big claim to fame is that during the 1960 presidential election, his stats and his math allowed him to call the win for Kennedy over Nixon, despite the early returns showing the other way around. So he was absolutely a legend within the industry and within this company. On the other hand, he was not the least bit approachable. He was super gruff. I'm 19 years old and he's super, super scary and imposing. But the worst part is he smoked this really foul smelling pipe. Now, behind the scenes, of course, we might have called him El Presidente a time or two. All right, so I get one of my first assignments. I'm supposed to write a program to apportion retirement payments and spread them out between current and former employees. Dr. Jack Moshman, he gave me the algorithm and a bunch of test data and said, write it exactly as I told you. I dutifully did that. I implemented his exact algorithm. I ran his test data from it, but something wasn't quite right. I'd put in his inputs, would not get his outputs. It just didn't match up, wasn't small disparities. Now, I'm brand new. He's got a PhD from the University of Tennessee. So clearly it must be my fault. I pull out his algorithms, I step through my code, I check and I check and I recheck, I single step through. I'm totally puzzled. It's just not matching up. Getting kind of a bit scared. This is my first real job, of course, and not sure what to do. Throw away all the code, rewrite the entire thing from scratch with trying not to have any memory of how I did it the first time around. Guess what? I get the same results. Getting a little bit nervous at this point, I bring in one of my colleagues, show him what I'm supposed to be doing, go through my code again, step by step by step. And he's like, you know what, Jeff? I think you're onto something here. Everything looks all right. Step into my manager's office, ask for some time. I've got the algorithms. I've got the test data. I've got my code. I've got the, the seemingly flawed results. Very, very carefully, we go over everything with an absolute fine tooth comb. And my manager agrees with me. He says, Jeff, you've done your homework. You've done a deep dive here. You did exactly what you were told to do and you're not getting the right results. At, so at this point, my manager and my colleague, they both concur that Dr. Jack Moshman is wrong. His algorithm is actually defective. My manager really thanked me for my diligence and making sure I wanted to get this right. He promised that I would pass all those, that he'd pass it all up the chain. Some time goes by. I move on to some new projects, some stuff I'll actually tell you about in another episode. Almost forgot about this project. So it's the end of a long day. I'm ready to go home and get back to my math homework. I step up to the elevator and hit the button. Wait a little bit. As that elevator door opens, I am hit by the most putrid smell you can possibly imagine. So think about a dead whale that's been on a hot beach. Mix that in with a bit of rotting durian, maybe 10 gallons or so of kerosene. Just oh, unbelievable. I know who's in there. In my head, the Jaws music is actually playing. It's dunner, dunner, dunner. And I kind of realized there's almost a showdown about to happen. Here I am. I'm this 19-year-old community college student. I'm horrible at math. I'm actually failing calculus at this point. And I'm about to step in the elevator and kind of pick up this battle with, with Dr. Jack Moshman, PhD from the University of Tennessee. 
I realize in this entire organization, I'm the youngest and I'm the least educated person there. Despite this, I've got to ride the elevator. I take a huge breath so I can, that's going to sustain me as on the ride down. And there's the pipe. And there he is, El Presidente. It's me and it's him. We got some unfinished business in its showdown time. The door closes. And as slowly as you can possibly imagine, the floors tick by. Four, three, two. I'm undoubtedly turning bright red at this point. If there was a 1.5 button, it would have lit up for a bit at this point. I'm staring at the door. Can't wait for fresh air and from some freedom. I hear El Presidente take a really deep puff off of his pipe thinking, "Uh uh-oh, this is it. I'm about to be fired. In the quietest voice you can possibly imagine, pipe still in his mouth, doesn't even look at me. You were right. The door opens. He steps out. I'm stuck with the dead whale. I'm totally stunned. I'm realizing, oh my gosh, I'm right after all. I'm so like, don't even know what to do next. The door closes. I find myself in the basement. I feel like I'm actually 10 feet tall at this point. I duck to get out of the elevator. As I'm getting out, the the janitor is stepping in, gets a whiff of that dead whale, looks back at me with this just like revulsion and disgust on his face. All I can think to say is, it wasn't me. It was El Presidente. Janitor looks at me with kind of a knowing face and we nod go on our respective ways. Big lesson for me, I stuck to my guns here. I did my research, I tried, I tried again, I checked my work with my colleagues, with my manager, the facts were on my side. I wasn't afraid to go in and say that I was right and Dr. Jack Moshman, he was wrong. That's my story for you today. And with that, let's get into our launches. First up is a brand new offering called Amazon Nimble Studio. This is for our customers in the media and in the entertainment business. If you're doing things like visual effects or creating animations or interactive content, I think you're really gonna like this. The goal of this service is to make it really easy for you to set up an artist workstation in the cloud. It does all sorts of really cool stuff. It lets you share assets, it lets you use global talent, and it helps you to manage your software licenses. It sets up all the moving parts for you. On the compute side, it launches G4DN instances with NVIDIA GPUs. It sets up Amazon FSx for shared storage, and it uses single sign-on so that the users don't actually need to interact with or sign in to AWS. On the render side, it uses Thinkbox Deadline to manage a render farm. Really easy to get this set up. All you need to do is you run the Studio Builder AMI, and you can find it in the AWS Marketplace. You install any of the desired packages, and then your users get a custom URL to log in. To learn more about this, you need to read Marcia's blog post. This is a little unusual one. I think you're going to find some really interesting uses for it. You can now replace the root volume of a running EC2 instance. I started thinking about this today, about all the really cool ways you might use this in a a testing environment. Let's say you you want to experiment with different kinds of configurations on your, your instance firewall or your network configuration. You can make those changes, and we all know sometimes you do that, and you do a little oops, and you actually can't get back into the instance to, to fix it. Well, you replace the root volume, and you try another experiment without having to go ahead and reboot. This is really easy to use as always. You can restore back to an initial launch state or to a snapshot of the root volume. You can do it from the console or the CLI. When you initiate this, the restore goes through three phases. It's pending, then it's in progress for a bit, and then it succeeds. When you do this, the data that's attached on any instance store volumes is still there. We also retain your network configuration, including your IP addresses, and we retain any IAM policies that are associated with the instance. You can learn more about this by simply reading the good old what's new. As I said before, I love your comments on YouTube, so keep them coming. Love to read every last one of them. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, come back again soon. We'll see you later.